Hello all and welcome to our third and final video for Perl scripting and we are going to dive directly into regular expressions. So let's get started. Regular expressions are used to allow us to look for patterns in data. So a few of the different ways that we're going to do it is with basic patterns, special characters to look for, quantifiers, anchors, um, matching, substitution, transforming. We're going to look at something called backtracking and then we're going to wrap up looking at a few common pitfalls people fall into when using Perl. So this would be our old way of looking for a specific word in a string sentence. So a pattern is something that is repeated and our simplest pattern that we can see is a word. It's a simple indicated sequence of special characters in a special order. And we can search whether a string contains a specific word. And like I said before, the old way we did it is we had our string value here we, that we want to look within. We've got our value that we want to look for. And then what we do is we split the sentence into its words. And then we march through those words, word by word, and see if the word equals what we're looking for. It's messy, it's complicated, and it's a little slow. And using this new idea of a regular expression, we do have a better way that we can do this. This is a much easier way to do it. You can see it much many more less lines of code and you will get the same exact result. So the text that you want to find goes between the slashes here in the if. This is the part that we call the regular expression part of it, okay? Then we have to tell Perl that we're looking for a particular string. That's what the equals and the little tildes mean. And that is the symbol that is above the key to the left of the number one. If this was going to return a value of one if it is found within a string and zero if it is not. So we can look at that as a true if it is found or a false if it is not. And we are going to use that default variable to search within. So we use the default variable, we set it equal to our string. And then if in the default variable, we find the string that says people print hooray, we found the word people. Literal text is the easiest regular expression to look for, and we can look for one word or we can look for a particular phrase, but we have to make sure that we exactly match all of the characters, the capitalization, the punctuation, and the white space. So over here we have the string and it says uh, capital I space and do, and it says print I do is in that string. So here I've got sometimes case, and even though sometimes case is up here on the upper right, there is a comma between it and a period after it, so it does not find that part of the string. Over here on the right, we've got test one, the dog is in the kennel, test two, the sheep dog is in the field. If in test one, we find the word space, dog, the dog is at home, which we do. We have a space and the word dog. So it says this dog's at home. In number two, we're saying, did you find a space dog? And even though the word dog is in here, it is not a space and a dog because it is a sheep dog. So therefore that one is false and we don't see that other print. So just make sure when you are looking for particular words or phrases that you're matching the capitalization, punctuation, and white space exactly. We can do something called an interpolation and it's going to store patterns within a variable. And this is gonna allow us to match a pattern when the program runs. So the main lines here are the pattern equals the STD IN, and then we chomp the pattern, and then if the pattern. So this right here is our main block. What this is going to do is take a line of text that the user input, get rid of the new line character at the end, that's what that chomp's gonna do, and then we're gonna test it. 
So here, for example, if the user put in enter some text to find, wonder, and then we say, I wonder what the intish is for yes and no, he thought. So we're going to say, is the word wonder in that pattern? So yes, it is. Here we're going to put that E-N-T-I-S-H. It is saying it was not found because it is a capital E. Here we have the H-O-U-G-H, and it does capture it because H-O-U-G-H is over here at the end. So it is finding a word within other characters. Last but not least, in the bottom here, we put and single quote, no single quote, and we do have that up here with the and, the space, the single quote, no, and a single quote. So it does print out the text matches the pattern and no. We can do some more advanced searches and by doing this we can say is it one of a number of characters and um, but it is going to have to occur at a certain position. So for example, the beginning, the end, things like that. We can use meta characters and we want to use the backslash. And those are those characters like the decimal point, the star, question mark, plus, and a bunch of brackets, the little caret above the six, dollar sign, straight line, and slash. And we just have to know that any other characters besides these actually have their meanings. But if we want to use these types of characters, we have to add the backslash. So here, if we want to match a dot, dot, dot as ellipses, it would be slash dot, slash dot, slash dot. We can turn off the special meanings in these specific characters by using a slash capital Q. And after the, spl the slash capital Q, the special characters are no longer going to be special and they're going to take on their meanings. So if I said slash capital Q before these ellipses, I could then just put dot, dot, dot and not have to put the slash dot, slash dot, slash dot. We can also use something called an anchor, which is going to determine where the pattern occurs. So it's either at the beginning of the string or the end of the string. And it is going to allow us to look either for specific things. So for example, anchors are really good to use to look at file extensions. So if I'm going to open a file that I assume is a .txt, I can use an anchor to look to see if the end of whatever the file name entered in is ends with a dot txt. So again, the anchor either has to be at the beginning or at the end. If the anchor is at the beginning, we put a caret. If the anchor is at the end, we put a dollar sign. So here we've got while print if syllable, we've got that dollar sign. So we want to know if the word ink here in it has the dollar sign is going to be at the end of whatever we're looking at. If we wanted to see if if syllable would be at the beginning, it would be dollar sign syllable to indicate the variable. And then at the end here, we would put that caret, which is the above the six. We do have shortcuts and different options that we can use when we're looking for patterns. So we have character classes, and that's going to be something that signifies that any one of a set of characters is acceptable. And we put those set of characters within square brackets. So here, enter some text to find AOI. So what this is going to look for in the text is a W-A-N-D-E-R, W-O-N-D-E-R, or a W-I-N-D-E-R. So if you want to kind of look for some misspellings or some different words that have similar spellings, we can put them within those square brackets. Here are a bunch of other shortcuts that are kind of convenient to use. We've got the slash D and the slash D is gonna give you digits from zero to nine. So if I want to see if there are any digits in my string, I can just send it the slash D. The slash W gives us a word character allowed in Perl variable name. So zero to nine, capital A to capital Z, and then lowercase a to lowercase z, and the underscore. 
S is going to give us a white space character. So it's going to be a space, tab, new line, return, things like that. So it's going to be a slash S. We've got a slash capital D, which is going to be the opposite of the lowercase d. So anything that's not a digit, the capital W is the opposite of the lowercase w. So it's anything that's not a word. And then slash capital S is a non-blank character. So in this scenario, we've got lower cases to mean that it is something, and we use uppercase to mean that it's not something. We have word boundaries, so words are not always surrounded by white space. Sometimes they have um, punctuation or it's a word within a word, and we can indicate those boundaries by using the slash B. And it's done. A, it's not going to actually match any character. It's going to match kind of like an invisible point between characters. So here we've got the slash double slash S slash W slash S. And that's going to look for the, um, what did we say before? Let's go back. Uh, a written white space character with a word in between it and then a white space character after it. It's saying that it's not found. Now, if I put the B around the word for boundaries, it's looking for a word with something indicating that it's the end of that word grouping. So then in that case, it does match. So there's a difference between looking for a white space using the slash S and indicating a boundary with the slash B. We can use quantifiers for repetition, and we're going to look for multiple characters in a row. The question mark is used to say that I'm uncertain about something. If something is optional, I'm going to use a parenthesis, and I'm going to use a plus sign if I want to match it one or more times, and a star is going to indicate that it may or may not be there. So in this Example, I've got BEA question mark T. So I'm not sure if the A is going to be there. Remember, all of these indicators go after what I'm looking for. So here, I'm not sure if the A is going to be there. So it's going to give me BEAT or BET. Here, I've got a plus if it matches one or more times. So BEA plus T. So it's going to be BEAT, BE, and then however many A's I have. The asterisk is going to indicate that it may or may not be there. So that is actually going to be kind of a combination of the two above it. So if the A is not there, it's going to give me the BET from the question mark. And it's also going to give me all of the variations of however many A's are in line. This is considered indefinite rep repetition because it kind of gives some examples of how we're not sure of what's there. So therefore we can look to see if it exists and how many times it exists. We do have well-defined repetition and this is gonna be much more precise. We know exactly what we're looking for. And we're gonna specify a minimum number of repeats and a maximum number of repeats. And we're gonna put those in the curly brackets. So. For example, here, enter some text to find, slash S, remember which is the word, and we're going to find it in groups of two or three. Here, I put the bounds, and I'm going to have words of groups of five. So five words put together to form a sentence. We do have something cool in um, Perl that's called a back reference. And we can use it if we want to know what the regular expression matched. Up till now, we just said, does it exist? Yes or no. So it's been a true or false. Now we can go and find where it actually matches. And it's special a group of special variables that are going to store anything that's matched within a group. So each time it finds a match, it is going to store that location in what we call this back reference variable. In order to access the back reference variables, all we do is it's dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, up until we run out of dollar signs here. So for example, a silly sentence, enter a regular expression, standard in. We're gonna chomp the pattern, which is gonna remove that carriage return at the end. And then if the pattern is within my sentence, I can say the text matches the pattern, and then I can go and indicate where it matched the pattern. 
there are some rules of this regular expression engine. So rule number one, once the engine starts matching, it's going to keep matching one character at a time for as long as it can. Once it sees something it doesn't match, it stops. Rule number two is that the engine is eager. It starts matching as soon as possible and stops as soon as possible. So in other words, it's going to start and finish as quickly as it can. Rule number three, the engine is greedy. If we use that plus sign or that asterisk, remember that was for that repetition, it's going to try and steal as much of that string as possible. It wants to find the fullest of the matches. And rule number four, these regular expression engines hate decisions. So if there are branches within your code and it's going to go different directions, it's always going to choose the first one no matter what. It's just lazy. Even if your second one may have a better match, it's never going to go down that road. So some things that we can do with these regular expressions, we can do substitution, which is very similar to our search and replace in like our Microsoft tools. We can change delimiters. So if I say I want to change from a parenthesis to a curly bracket, I can search through strings and change all of those. I can add modifiers like new lines, white spaces, tabs, things like that. I can do a split, which is breaking up the string into a list. I can join, which is putting those lists kind of back together into another string. And I can also do something called a transliteration. And that is going to be to substitute individual characters within a string with something else. So it's very similar to change delimiters, but we can do it with other characters. Finally, some common pitfalls that people run into when dealing with regular expressions and um, in Perl. So number one, forgetting to group. So if you do want to group something, make sure you add your parentheses to group. Getting your anchors wrong and getting them backwards. Remember, your up arrow is at the beginning and the dollar sign is at the end. Forgetting to put that backslash in front of those escape special characters um, and then it's going to get messed up or using that slash capital Q in order to turn that off and then using the special characters. So uh, the last two counting from zero and then not counting from zero. So they do sound like they're kind of contradictory. But remember, with arrays and, and things like that, the indices do start at zero. So you want to make sure with with arrays, you do start at zero. But with that back reference variable, with that dollar sign and then the number, that actually does start at one. It does not start at zero. So if you try to use a dollar sign zero, it's going to give you an error. So that wraps up our short adventures into Perl. And it has been a pleasure learning with all of you guys. And I hope that you guys will be in a class of mine again soon.